Hello Africa, hello Nigeria. You're watching Plus TV Africa and we're reaching you live from our studios in Lagos. The program is Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. Today we have another interesting package for you. We're going to be talking about African football um, in the age of globalization. What's the status of African football today? Um, what are we doing? What have we been doing? And what we should be doing going into the future? One thing is clear, African football is being swamped from all angles. African sports is being swamped. What do we need to do to reclaim our markets? Because we're losing jobs, we're losing income, we're losing uh, uh, competitiveness, and our, our societies are even um, becoming a lot more restive than you know, it would be if, they had, if we had good sports engaging our young. Joining me to talk about this, you know, football in Africa in the age of globalization are two very experienced sports business players. From, Ni from Kenya will be Brian Wasela. He's a writer, public speaker, and, you know, sports business uh, consultant. He, he, you know, he has a full grasp of what's going on, and he's also right now putting together um, what, you know, uh, an African, African football business summit. He's the founder and CEO of the, found, the Football Foundation for Africa. Also with me and in the studio will be Mr. Asha Thierry, Thierry Alon. He's the CEO of Africa Sport Network. And you know, um, basically what his company does is to try and see how they can promote African sports to the world. Now, if you want to be part of this um, uh, um, program, and I invite you to be a part of this program, what I'll do to, say, to do is keep the dial on, on, on uh, Plus TV Africa. We're going to go on a very short break, and when we return, the business begins. You're welcome back to the program Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga, and you're watching Plus TV Africa, and we're reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island. Joining me now from Kenya is Mr. Brian Wesela. Brian, we need, we need to talk about you know, what's going on with our football and what you're doing to try and you know, build you know, uh, interest back in football business in Africa. You know, and there's interest because um, according to you know, a recent, um, when IMG took over from CAF, you know, uh, CAF, they were later to find that, you know, you know, a lot of, there was a lot of interest in African football. As a matter of fact, quoting um, one, of their, one of their top officials, he says, we, when we announced that we're official partners of CAF, we got a lot of international interest from brands. Brands were coming to say to us, how can we get involved with CAF? But that's CAF, you know, and um, because CAF, um, Afcon is the biggest sports property on the continent. Do you think, do you get a sense that this is what can be um, with African club football as well? This is uh, possible and uh, uh, we need to leverage uh, on these, uh, you know, great visibility that the last uh, Afcon uh, gave us. And uh, uh, to do this, I think we need to, we need to move uh, strategically Mm. Uh, invest uh, in the right places. Mm. Of course, it's it's easy to to play around. You know what happened with Afcon, but still, uh, our our football ecosystem is uh, is hugely underdeveloped, and uh, especially when it comes to uh, uh, to club football. So it's up to us now to think how do we leverage the popularity that African football has gained over the last couple of years. Uh, and see how we can translate that to building a more sustainable uh, African sports uh, ecosystem. Of course, we have a huge advantage because of the, of the population we have in Africa, um, uh, the youthful uh, population, uh, the abundance of, of, of talent. But these are, this is what we are naturally endowed with as a continent. But in terms of now, how do we harness these uh, to make football and sports in general uh, contribute uh, to the social and economic development 
uh, of the continent is where the work uh, actually lies. And that's something we should uh, really engage the different stakeholders from government, academia, private sector, and then those of us who are now in the sports space, in the football space, to craft a way forward uh, for football in Africa. Okay, you say, you say that we should leverage on, on the popularity of African stars. Well, there, there's a bit of a contra there's a bit of um, is it a contra contradiction now? Because yeah, we should leverage on that. But when the African fan sees the popular African star, he associates the person with the club he plays with in Europe. He associates him with European football. How do we? How do you think that that? Um, how do we work around that? Um. In this age of uh, uh, globalization, and that's where we really need to, to, to think, it's, uh, it's a hard work to overturn what has happened uh, to African football because of globalization. Mm. Uh, because in my view, um, globalization has Afri affected African football in, in two ways. Mm. Uh, one is in labor, uh, and uh, secondly, it's with, uh, with media. I'm sure here my friend Asha will have a lot more to say. Mm. But you see, because of globalization, people look at Africa as a labor provider, or a labor exporter. Mm. So that's why you find a lot of our players, uh, the best of them are always moving to, 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 to more developed sports uh, economies uh, because here in Africa we have not invested enough uh, already uh, to be able to pay uh, or to make uh, football uh, an economically you know, viable um, endeavor for, uh, for an athlete. And for that, we have what has been called the, 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 the migration of labor to, uh, to Europe, which has kind of had an impact on our local uh, leagues, our local clubs. Because if your best are in, in Europe, it means um, not, not really your second best, but what you're left behind with, it's more difficult to market. Mm. And then the other area that, uh, in which uh, globalization has impacted African football is in media. Africa has become a heavy consumer of media from other markets. And we are paying huge, huge uh, uh, fees, uh, you know, to get these uh, media or to, to have the EPL and the La Liga and the Champions League streamed uh, across across the continent. So in my view, this needs, we need, need to work on a shift mm. so that we have more players uh, staying in Africa. That means we have to improve the quality of our competitions, our clubs, our leagues. Um, and two, we have to see how do we counter uh, the, 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 the media that we are, we are bombarded with by one, improving the quality of our own media, and two, getting the policies right so that we are able to save Africa the much needed resources, financial resources it needs, mm. build its own sports ecosystem. Mm. So globalization is, is a good thing but it also has its drawbacks. And in the case of football, it has impacted us in these two heavy ways that we need to counter. And to move forward, I think we need to uh, change the way we interact with the more developed sports economies. So away from being a labor exporter and a media consumer, we need to attract investment. And also we need a lot of knowledge uh, transfer. That's why we're organizing uh, events such as the Africa Football Business Summit really to have an African agenda by the same time to welcome expertise from outside to help us to grow our industry in the coming years. Okay. Brian, I'm going to come back to you on, on something. Like, for instance, um, and, and what that is, by the way, is that to, to grow football in Africa, to come up with the sort of quality that people talk about, that I hear people talk about, you need funding. All right. If you don't have funding, then you've got to look at a different way of getting, you know, the audience that you're looking for, to, of getting the fans to be, you know, to be better invested in their local clubs. But before I get to that, let me ask Asha. Asha, Asha you've been in the media space, and you've heard him say the media, you know, is uh, is a, a key stakeholder, right? And you know that the media can shape opinion. Media can even create the sort of interest that the that the the public should should have right and african the african media yeah 
and I think Brian alluded, alluded to that, has really, you know, undersold African sports. You know, in an age when people are looking around the world for, for properties to consume that, that are beyond their own properties, right? How well do you think the media is doing that? What do you think is the problem, uh, you know, or what, what, are the, what are the wins for the African media in this age of globalization? So, first of all, uh most medias, we need to understand, they are after earning money. Mm. They are not about uh, developing the football or developing the culture. Mm. And they will go after what brings rating. Mm. So if I'll push, uh, if I'll uh, uh, stream or broadcast uh, EPL mm. or other major leagues, and I know that this will bring me uh, a lot of attention, a lot of rating, therefore advertisers and so on, let me, I'll just go and do that. That's the easiest. I just buy the feed. I will sell it off. People will watch, will earn money. To do the local production, that's much more costly. That requires an investment from the media itself. Mm. Uh, and it's a product that is still considered uh, uh, on the lower level uh, in any aspect than the European leagues because of level of production because of the level of, of, uh, of stadiums, mm. because of the level of the game itself. Mm. Uh, Brian said uh, very right, so we need to develop our African style in football. We'll, we need that. Uh, moreover, I think it's, it's a lot of a cultural thing that if I go to the stadium and the stadium is empty, and I watch it on TV and I'll see when I watch uh, the match on TV that the stadium is empty, my level of interest will go down mm. uh, because there is no ambience. Mm. Uh, now, uh, th this, is, this is a strong element, this, the, the ambience around it. Moreover, I think that the viewer at home or the standout person on the street, he wants to watch success regardless where it's coming from. Mm. Okay? And when you're watching World Cup, you will adore the, comp the, the teams that are successful. Which of the uh, African teams really reached finals? Not yet. We, we had uh, uh, Morocco in the last uh, 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 World Cup that uh, reached very high. But most of the, most of the African teams are getting uh, uh, eliminated before the finals okay? or, or, or the last stages. That's very important. Um, the minute that we have this very glamorous Champions League in, in Europe, with all the big players, there is no something equivalent in Africa. There is, but it's not really followed. It's not really developed. It's not doesn't have the same glamour. Uh, uh, and moreover, it's not always accessible on TV. Then it's a whole ecosystem that needs to be nourished from all sides in order to succeed. Okay, so I get this a lot. You know, people say that you know the African game is not is not developed enough. I understand that it's not glizzy enough or glamorous enough. I understand that we don't have the the money that you know um, can make us develop these sorts of products. I mean, that's easy to see. So the challenge then becomes: How do we, with the resources that we have, because we can't match Europe when it comes to um, financial resources, for instance, or when it comes to the quality of talent? How do we, as Africans, then compete in the age of globalization? I'll come to you, Brian. You know, it was, it's, it's like the question I asked you before, that I said I was going to come to you with. How do we then get the fans if we don't have the, the, the resources um, that the, the more popular competitors have? Well, I think, honestly, that's where, that's where I see, like, uh, uh, Policy needs to policy needs to come in. Uh, policy needs to, to to play a role in in protecting the African market. Mm. We don't have the financial resources to you know compete with these uh, global uh, properties, but mm. we can protect our um, our marketing by 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 more regulation. And that's what uh, happened in uh, uh, happened in Europe. You know, when they liberalized the uh, media, and now they could be able to stream their um, uh, their matches or their sports globally, you know, those are things that came out of regulation. So, mm -hmm. as Africa, we also need we also need to regulate so that we protect ourselves and be able to invest uh, in ourselves. Because at the moment, we are spending a lot on bringing these 
or whatever we are calling as as as, as glamorous. But mm. I can tell you from where I sit, and I'm a big advocate, for example, of grassroots football. Mm. If we package even our grassroots football well, especially in this age of technology where we have platforms that we can we can we can use, we can have a product that can almost compete with whatever is there globally and using media as well to tell our own unique uh, stories, creating um, ecosystems that work for us. For example, uh, my friend has just mentioned Stadia and our inability to, to fill Stadia. How come we're not rethinking the design of our stadiums? Create smaller uh, uh, facilities that sit well within our, our ecosystem our environment, even if it's 5,000, 10,000 seaters, and fill them and create that atmosphere that we are talking about. Create a product that we can sell um, uh, out there, as opposed to just us saying, ah, the, 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 the European, the Champions League is more glamorous, so that's what our mid people uh, run to. The other thing we have to look at is ownership. You know, we need to start owning our own platforms. You know, even if we are uh, saying that it's all, it's all business, I go for, for the most... Uh, um glamorous product you know once we take ownership of our own development our own media then we'll be able to position products that are actually working uh, uh for us we'll be able to build our own clubs you know it has happened in music hmm. nigerian music afrobeat now we are exporting that globally hmm. but it took that creation of something unique something african and a lot of patience and hard work to get to where we see our music now is. Can the same happen in football? Definitely it can. You know, for me, watching a program for a 90-minute minute, uh, EPL match is just as entertaining as going somewhere in my grassroots uh, uh, community and watching a, a match featuring very raw talent. Very, it's just that also globalization is, is a, has become an issue of association. Mm. You know, Africans want to associate as well with these what they believe is glamorous at the expense of what they own. So it will take a lot of hard work, a lot of education, and I insist policy, we have to shape policies that protect our market and help our market to uh, to grow. So we have to legislate accordingly at the Africa Union level and with our economic, um, you know, our economic groupings. We need to start thinking of how do we build this sports ecosystem and link it to our own social uh, economic development and then we'll be able to compete uh, globally. So it has to be multifaceted, as, as, as Asha put, uh, uh, put it out. We have to engage all the stakeholders, the private sector. Where do they want to put their money? If this is the media owner, why are they putting their money in these global products at the expense of building mm. our, our, our own? And that's the only way uh, African sports will start you know, to grow. We cannot grow without protecting our market yeah. at the moment. Okay, that. So, Brian says um, some, some sort of protection. And, you know, we tried that in Nigeria, by the way. We tried it um, in 2018 or, th or thereabout, you know, where they said, you know, if you had to invest um, in, say, the sponsorship of a European football club or the EPL or La Liga or any one of these properties, then you have to put 30% of what you are investing in that property in some sort of domestic uh, competition. I'll tell you something. It was it was Nigerians that killed it. You know, we didn't we, we didn't like it because we thought it would it would um, stop us from watching the EPL. Do you get? So that's on the one hand, we need protection, but we need people who have got to champion these things to see it through. That's one hand. On the other hand, you are talking about media being about you know what we sell. Yeah, and yeah, maybe you, yeah you're right. But well, the point is, what sells today can kill you tomorrow. Yeah? As in business, they say, what made you succeed today can make you fail tomorrow. We have seen a situation where over the last 30 years, Africans have spent possibly over a billion dollars watching European football. Now we don't have money anymore. Everybody is struggling. So shouldn't we protect our own? Shouldn't we say, you know what, as a media organization, we owe it to ourselves to make sure that we tell our stories, like Brian said, because it's the stories that the fans actually follow. It's the stories. People, you'll be shocked. In Nigeria today, a lot of people don't even watch the matches. But they follow the results, and then that's what gets them into the social conversation. 
So what do you think, Asha? Do you think it's just about, you know, do we have to get the quality right? Or is the media part of getting the quality right? So let, let, me, let me tell you several things. I, I agreed with everything that Brian said, except mm. one single thing. Mm. He said we don't have the resources. Mm. Africa has the most, it's the, the, the continent with the most resources in the world, okay? Mm. The question is what are we doing with those resources, mm. okay? Uh, what, what policies our government is putting in place in order to ensure that every international company that comes around mm. must do uh, local investment on sports, culture, uh, anything that goes, uh, that enters under the CSR uh, uh, budgets, mm. okay? If they will do that, and sports included, as an element, as a KPI within, then you will start seeing money flowing from all those companies that are uh, 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 exploiting uh, uh, minerals in Africa, mm. starting to invest back in the sport, in the culture, in everything that is beyond just going and donating rice and oil, mm. which is very nice as, of, of its own, but it doesn't, it doesn't, pro, it doesn't create this ecosystem that will be able to provide to itself. Mm. Moreover, uh, um, club owners, we have so many rich people in Africa, billionaires. Which one of them comes to the sport? Almost n neither one of them, mm. okay? How many billionaires in, in Europe are entering to sport? Many. This is something and it needs to change. Maybe it's a tax incentive element that if you will invest in sport, you will get a certain tax incentive on, the, on a certain amount or it will be deductible then money will start flowing from these guys uh, that are very powerful and, and have the means to, towards, the, towards the football. Moreover, if you will give an incentive to a football club to retain its player for a minimum level of years, you will not have a player that excelled for one year and immediately is getting uh, purchased by an, a, a European club. No, he will stay because the club is, in, is getting an incentive, because maybe also the player is getting an incentive to mm. stay in, and to, to develop this, this uh, uh, element. And then another incentive for the crowd to come to the stadium. Mm. Once the crowd will come to the stadium, brands will start looking at it, mm. okay? Now, us as a media, we need to, be, to support all that. We need to, at first, because of the low buying power in Africa, we need to provide media support in a very affordable price in order to assist this whole ecosystem to be in the news, to be broadcasted. Mm. And th th that's exactly what we are doing. You're, you're familiar with our activity in Africa. And you know that if we are uh, charging a fraction of, of any other network, just because we see the potential and just because we understand that this is part of a long journey, then this is what the media needs to do needs to give the support, uh, uh, invest, and then charge a very small amount from the end user in order to generate this culture uh, and make this uh, ecosystem be mediatized in the best way possible. Okay. Brian, uh, we're going to go on a short break. And when we return, uh, we would continue the business. But Brian, here's what I want you to keep in, in perspective. You know, in Europe, it is not about, it is not about um, how fancy, how glamorous the, the football is. It's about cultural support. It's about community support, right? So it doesn't matter whether you are a Wrexham or whether you are a Real Madrid, you have fans from your local communities. Is that something missing in African football? And how do we get that um, to become maybe a, 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 a strategy for going ahead? Let's take a short break. When we return, uh, I'll come to you, Brian. Welcome back to the program, Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. Joining me today from Kenya is um, Mr. Brian Wesala, and um, he's the CEO, founder and CEO of the Football Foundation for Africa. In the studio with me is Asha, Al Asha Thierry Alon. He's the CEO of Africa Sport Network. Brian, we were talking to you about um, the culture of support in Africa as different from the culture of support in Europe. How, how, is that a possible way we can get around um, not having the kind of resources that 
probably we need today to, to be globally competitive? Um, I, I always hesitate to, uh, to, you know, to compare African football and European football and seeing that as a, a, a gap that we have to cover. Mm. I, I think also we're at the point where African sports, African football needs to decide how do we want to grow. You mentioned uh, the issue we have with, you know, communities um, supporting, you know, clubs. Here in Africa, you see a lot of factors that have played into this. We have the big community clubs. I can tell you, for example, here in Kenya, we have um, AFC Leopards and, uh, and Godma here. These are clubs with, uh, with, uh, with a huge following. But now the challenge is they have not been educated well enough to put in place strategies uh, to, 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 to monetize or to develop a, a, an economic model around their, their, their fan bases, you know? So that's one. Another kind of clubs we see here, and I think there's similar structures in Nigeria, is uh, clubs that are either supported by, uh, by perestators or, um, or, or, or companies, kind of like a CSR uh, uh, project. So here in Kenya, you would see uh, like uh, one of the leading banks in the region, KCB, they have a football club. You see, these kind of entities will never have a community around them. They will never be able to develop a fan base. Mm. But these are the clubs that are holding uh, everything you know, uh, uh, together. Uh, I believe in Nigeria, you have a lot of clubs that are, are tied to your um, to the federal mm. states. Mm. You know? So how do you now take these and help them, for example, develop a strategy that will ground them in, in community? Some here have tried, oh, let's move our club to a certain region so that we can associate that, that region. I think that's the wrong approach. Those who want to invest in sports should look at teams or clubs in the communities and grow them from there. That's the challenge we have with Africa. Mm. The, other thing, my, uh, the other issue we have is the proliferation of, of football academies across a continent. Mm. Uh, and this has been um, kind of uh, encouraged by the idea that uh, you, you, you can sell a player and immediately you become, you know, um, a millionaire, you know. But we are not seeing how these academies are impacting what we talk about as culture. Because for them, they, they are mostly fashioned for export. Mm. So are they thinking around how they will build uh, uh, the a community around them? Some of, you, some of them are even very guarded uh, entities we know in West Africa, these are the very, very popular academies that have no link whatsoever with the community where they have been established. Mm. They have simply been put in place like a factory for factory for players. So how do we counter uh, all this? For me, it's about investing in the grassroots, investing in education, investing in infrastructure, build around what is already there mm. in order to create that culture of football. But you, you, it's difficult for me to say, you know, we don't have that, you know, I am a, a Lexham fan kind of thing. We have it. It's just that we are not thinking of how to strategically grow it. Mm. You know, everybody is doing something small here and there. Mm. But even if we take that whole ecosystem, as uh, if we take it as a whole and see how do we position it, you know, for investment, then you can see something start to move uh, socially and, and, and economically. So there, there are really many issues that we should start to analyze. And that's why... I believe research knowledge will be important in moving the African industry forward. Mm -hmm. It's not just about resources. And you're right, Asha, and you say, yeah, we have the resources. But that can go to a very, you know, political level. You can say you have the, the resources, but how much of it is it being invested in, in, uh, in, in football, in sports? And the other challenge we have is that, you know, sports, football, did not give that immediate return that a lot of people who hold the financial resources are looking for. But there's that social capital that we can build through sports that needs to be invested in. So how do we get more people to support our grassroots uh, football, our grassroots structure to be able to grow the whole, uh, uh, the whole industry and to grow these clubs that we're talking about so that they can have a fan base? And the fan base there have to be huge. I have seen small clubs here develop even a digital uh, fan base. I can give you an example of Eldoret Football Club. 
very small entity in one of uh, Kenya's newest city, actually. But because of the strategic work they've been able to do, they've been able to build a community around what they see as values that they can promote. Mm. So these are the kind of strategies, knowledge that we need to work on to build a sustainable uh, football ecosystem in Africa. Okay. Uh, very well said, I think. Okay, so now, Asha, here's where the media... You know, I'm very hard on the media, you know, and you know, you, you know you've, you've, you've been on my show a few times, and you know that I'm really, really hard on the media. Why? Because it's the media that should tell the stories. It's the media that must, you know, put, uh, that must draw in the audience. I'll give you an example. If you, if you don't tell these stories, and the stories are there, actually, yeah? But if you don't tell these stories, you can't generate the sort of buzz that would then make the billionaire that you're talking about then say, you know what, even if I don't make money from this, at least there's goodwill. Let me just, let me do this for my community because maybe it fosters peace and then my, I'll have a better business environment to, to operate, yeah? But you guys don't tell the stories. I, I'll give you an example. There's, the, there's a young guy in Nigerian football today. He's Amobi, he's, he's the GM of Rangers International. This guy took over the club last year as GM, and he, he took them to the championship. He won the championship, right? And every day he's out there doing what I think, you know, what most of us agree is the, are the right things. He's getting young people in the communities involved in the club. People are 13, 14, 15. He's talking to them about, you know, character, you know, uh, for me, you know, how, how they must grow as characters characters, you know, grow in character to be able to represent Rangers and the wider society and things like that. He's doing a fantastic job. Yet, I have not one day opened any newspaper or seen any article from any media organization in this country just doing some story about this guy that enchants, this guy is 34, some story about this young guy that enchants younger Nigerians and makes them think, oh, so maybe this thing is possible. Maybe we should um, emulate this guy. I haven't seen anything like that. Why, Asha? Why aren't you telling our stories? Well, good question. Yeah. But uh, I'll, I, was, I was smiling because, I'm, first of all, I'm not familiar with the, the story of these guys of Rangers. Uh, and maybe, Asha, that's a problem. I, well, it's a problem. Yeah, it but is. It's, sometimes it's a problem that is generated from its root, okay? Mm. If I looked at the match of Rangers against El Kanemi on the first match day, mm. and the stadium was 90% empty, mm. then maybe the guy is doing a fantastic job, and I'm not criticizing, but maybe it's not sufficient in order to fill up the stadium, because mm. how hard it should be to fill up a stadium in Nigeria, and it's such a populated country, that you have kids everywhere, just bring them free of charge into the stadium for the ambience. So maybe the guy is doing a fantastic job and you're familiar with him, mm. but he's still on the level that doesn't create these waves in the pond that will come to the media. We are going, we have, yeah. we, I had my journalist on grounds mm. in each and every one of the, of the NPFL matches since mm. last year. Mm. Um, are we familiar with people that are doing a fantastic job? Of course we are. Mm -hmm. We are not. Are we familiar with everybody? Definitely, definitely not. Okay. Um, by that we can only encourage them. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people will, they need to come and say, look, they need to contact the media and say, guys, come and see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are doing something, but no one do, is do, uh, knows about it just because they were so quiet about it. Or maybe you don't know about it because, you know, maybe your guys need to do a bit more work. Because he's a very popular guy. People, Might be. Yeah, people know him in the industry and what he's doing. All right? And um, it's something, I would, it would be refreshing someday to see this guy or to see a player. And, you know, the, the stars are the business. Fans follow the stars. Today in the Nigerian League, you know, one of the problems I personally have is you can't see guys point to 10 players and say these are the top stars in the Nigerian Premier League. Do you understand? Without seeing their pictures, without seeing any story about them, they'll tell you. We need to create these stars. You know, some people say it's the responsibility of the clubs. I, I don't 
totally agree with that. Do you get? I think the media should do a lot more because, but the media needs to understand that by promoting the league, they too get business. Let me go to Brian. Right? What's the situation like in Kenya uh, between your media and 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 your clubs? Um, first, just just to take you back here, yeah, I think uh, it's, it's good that you brought up uh, the, the the story of uh, Amobi Ezia, who is actually one of the speakers at the upcoming Africa Football Business Summit here in yeah, in Kenya, because he is he is doing an excellent job. Yeah. And it just took me, you know, two connections to see there's somebody in Nigeria who is trying to do something different. Mm. So I think uh, this, this is the kind of work that needs to be congratulated, um, highlighted, and 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 showcased uh, in the summit because. Uh, the challenge now you have, and probably that's what Ashley is alluding to, is that he's not doing enough. No, he's doing his bit. So we need another five or six, seven Amobi as yeah. of the Nigerian League uh, to, to be able to create, you know, that kind of uh, environment that we are we are looking for. Yeah, coming back to um, uh, yeah, the media here and and the role they play, and I think this is another area that I feel we really need to uh, to work on. Um, and again, it's for the same reason, probably we are going back to the conversation we started. Our media is heavily focused on uh, on pushing uh, foreign leagues. One of the, most of the people who are here regarded as, you know, renowned journalists, uh, renowned sports journalists, have, have built their, their name, their brand uh, around, you know, foreign leagues and foreign, uh, foreign clubs. So you see the, the, the quality of sports journalism, I'll speak here specifically for Kenya, but I think I can also talk about Africa, is not good. You know, they're not giving us in-depth coverage of what is happening in our clubs. Yeah, You read something from a journalist or, or a video and you fail to, to see, like, what has this guy informed me about yeah. my industry, about my club that I cannot get uh, by my own. They're just focused on Publish calls, transfers, mm. peace. But there's a lot of stories. There's a lot you can tell, even from the challenges and the opportunities. You know, like you say, giving good coverage to the kind of work somebody like Amobi uh, is doing in Nigeria should should even be at the global, you know, at the at the continental level. Mm. And the big uh, media outlets should be able to cover this kind of thing as a way of, you know, even inspiring. Mm. Uh, uh, the rest uh, of the of the content. So I think there is there is a lot of work we can do in the media space to cover more of our local football and even locally. It's not just covering the the you know the top clubs and top leagues. You know, go right to the grassroots. Bring us these stories that we feel uh, are informing us. They're educating us. They're entertaining us with things you can never cannot find maybe on mainstream media. Mm. I find it strange that as African sports journalists, they share, you know, EPL scores. Like, why would you be giving me EPL scores? I'm already following my, my favorite club in, in Europe, so I get those scores uh, because you know, in the age of social media. Mm. So I think there is some work that needs to be done there, and also it takes people who really will have a passion uh, to cover to bring African sports stories to that level that they will then be able to uh, to monetize. Okay, I'm going, Ash, I'm going to come to you, but <laughs> let me also, make, I completely agree with you, Brian, right? Um, so I remember what got me in, 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 uh, into the, the big tennis, the big tennis events, um, golf, and all of that. Why? And, and Formula One, by the way, why? There were weekends, I used to look forward to weekends just to read stories about, you know, the conquest of, of Lewis Hamilton, of, um, of, um, of Tiger Woods, of, of Roger Federer and, and the like. Do you understand? Just the beauty of the, of, of the articles was enough ent entertainment for me. Do you understand? So when we look at the media, it's not like he's saying, it's not just about, you know, putting out scores and, you know, putting out fixtures and all that. You've got to write stuff in, in enchanting ways that, you know, uh, the fans can say, you know what, if this is what's going on, I want a piece of that. Do you understand? I want to see this guy that they're talking about, you know. And then before you know it, you can feel, you can feel your stadiums. But yeah, Asha. So 
Bas basically, basically. You know, let me cut. You, you know, I, you know I, I know that you want to grow the local game. We've had discussions before. But what more do you think we can do? You know, what more do you think we can do uh, to make sure that we can bring together, you know, the key stakeholders in the industry? I, you know, look, I'm in the media as well myself, bringing you. Do you think that there's a need for the media to, to lead the charge to bring together everybody and say this is how sports can progress our societies. Do you think that? Well, Lydia, uh, the, the media have a very important role mm. uh, that we are taking very serious. Okay, mm. You have your uh, radio programs, you have your TV programs. Mm. Ourselves in Africa Sport Network, we are 50% of our content mm. is local content. Mm. And only the other 50 speaks about the, uh, the whole other uh, Western and, and uh, world. Yeah. So we, we are doing our part. I yeah. think that one of the biggest challenges in Africa is that the guys with the passion don't have the means. Yeah. And the guys with the means, don't they have don't the have the passion. Yes. And this, this connection needs to be done, whether by, as I said earlier, by government incentives. So the guys with the means will be connected to the guys with the passion and they will start to to bring it uh, 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 to create this ecosystem that will create teams that are here not just in order to sell players they are here to grow a football uh, 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 culture they are here to grow this heritage of a club that is doing something not just in order to sell the player one year after he, he scored many goals or something like that. Um, and once it will come, and this must be driven by the whole ecosystem. I cannot go to someone that has the means, and we have plenty of people in Nigeria that has the means, and to tell them, guys, please put uh, no, but, uh, but $5 million dollars this year on this club no, no, because it will ring. Yeah, but he needs to be Asha, passionate about Asha, it. last season, one of the richest Nigerians, uh, Mr. Tony Lumelu, went public with the fact that he was interested in, in getting and, into the football space. And what happened with that? Nothing happened. Because nobody's hearing about it anymore. Nobody, ha nobody has said he decided happened. not to go. Because he decided not to enter to football. Mm. We were keen. We were, of course, for us as a media network, mm. thinking that uh, Tony Lumelu will enter. You'll say, okay, the whole group of UBA Has will, he come will out come. to say that? Of course not. But if we were, we were just... Uh, waiting for something to happen in order for us to, to, to reach out and to see what we can do together and to give it coverage. Eventually, it never happened. We cannot push the person that is maybe sending a, a test balloon to the air to yeah. see where the wind will take this balloon and uh, r putting all our hopes on this one. Yeah. Uh, it, things should happen from these guys. Yeah. And the fact that he already or someone already brought the topic I think it's something that is good, okay? Mm. I think it's a move in the right direction. But now things should happen, okay? And even if a club owner that doesn't have the means of, the, of that person uh, can still drive crowd into the stadium and still make sure that the stadium is full once we are streaming it uh, live to make it more interesting. And once this will happen, things people will start looking at it differently. Okay. I have a slide o on how much the rights for the English Premier League um, is costing you know, us in Nigeria. And um, Brian, look, if every year now, I mean, the deal that was signed two years ago that's expiring next year shows that the EPL costs you know, the, the broadcaster $222 million every year. That's money that's leaving Africa. $222 million. It's money we don't have. You know, this is what they say, like, Rome is burning and Caesar is fiddling, uh, and uh, Nero is fiddling. I mean, look, we can't be fiddling, you know. We need to trap this money in Africa and make it do something for us, you know. So, um, Bren, what do you think? Um, how, how do we, how do we, how do we get our markets to see the value of, of, of um, uh, football, that, of, of business that we're losing because of all of this um, Euro football that we are, we are angling for? 
yeah, this, listening, uh, listening to you and, and, and Asha, I, I, I now, I think of how I've been thinking um, lately is that we need to push a bigger agenda through football if we are going to rope in the right people mm -hmm. to invest in our sports, in our football. Mm -hmm. And that has to be a very Pan-African agenda. How do we link our sports, our football, to the progress of our continent and our people? And I think when we spoke, I told you, probably it's even high time we stop thinking as Nigeria, as Kenya. And how do we think Africa? Because mm -hmm. football is something that, you know, brings us uh, together. But we cannot just afford to, you know, be passionate. We love football. Can we drive a huge social economic agenda through our sports that we now attract these big people, big money that we are talking about? It's interesting to hear people like Tony are interested in the in the sports space. Mm. But probably if they just see it within that lens of I am putting my money in football, they will not uh, uh, they, will, they, 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 they will shy away. So we need really to push a bigger agenda and it's something probably needs to be crafted uh, to see how we can bring in these people. And for me, it has to be tied to you know, social economic development of, uh, of our continent. Okay. And, you know, link it to infrastructure, to health, to education. Okay, Brian. That drive Brian. through the platform that we have. Okay, Brian, I, I need to draw your example to what's going on in South Africa. You're closer to South Africa than we are, right? And I tell people that from the very first year that the PSL was launched in 1996, they've had um, um, title sponsorships all the way through to now. I'm talking about first they started with Castle Lager, and then it was Absa Bank, then it was DSTV, now it's Betway. They didn't wait for the product to be finished or to be some glamorous... They support, for me, I think that is support as opposed to identifying with success. It's happening in South Africa. What, 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 why are they doing what they're doing? And why are we not doing the same? You know, just basically looking at it from the point of getting corporate in investors into sports. Yeah, it's, exactly, it's exactly what I'm saying. They tied it to a big agenda. Yeah. Uh, and that was, you know, post appetite. Yeah. What platform is going to seem to be bringing oh, yeah, us together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and you remember that was 93, 94, mm. uh, when they hosted um, uh, the, the Rugby World Cup. Uh, immediately, uh, that was followed by hosting the, the AFCON in 1996, yeah. which was yeah. supposed to be in Kenya, but because Kenya could not uh, put together infrastructure yeah. uh, in good time, South Africa took the tournament. But that investment in sports was really being driven by that post appetite movement and yeah, uniting the people yeah. of South Africa. Yeah, yeah. And that's why they were heavily, heavily investing in sports. So how can we take that to a continental level? You know, you rarely hear when, you know, they talk about Africa Agenda 2063, but you rarely hear them talking about sports in these mm. things. Sports is somewhere, you know, really hidden. It's not one of the, those key uh, mm. areas of, of, of investment. But mm. a country like, like, like Europe, I tell people, Look at what, outside of these big brands that we see, you know, look at why is Europe investing in, in, in football and what kind of messages do they communicate. Mm. For example, UEFA, they have their respect campaign. Mm. And without really realizing, they have a measure of respect for, for each other as countries. And people really rally behind these kind of campaigns. Media will definitely follow a campaign that has a continental reach. Yes. And with that kind of media attention, then uh, the, the investors, the, the private uh, people that we're looking at with the, with the, with the, with the big money, they will, they will come in. Okay. So we, we really have to tie it to a bigger, a bigger agenda if we're going to grow our sports in Africa. Okay. Um, very quickly now, Asha. You know, um, what do you think in the age of globalization, and you have to do this like in a minute or so because we need to uh, call, call, uh, wrap, wrap things up. What do you think in, in the age of globalization we should do in, in, in Africa? From your standpoint, what do you think we should do? Governmental change. Because once the government will give incentives mm. for sports investments or investments mm. in sport, mm. the brands will stop pushing it. Mm. Okay? Secondly, the government needs to decide 
on a national plan for development of sport in different different types of sport there is no reason uh, why we won't have proper basketball in Nigeria yeah. it's not that we are uh, yeah. all uh, short people yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so there is no reason why not to have it but the reason is that just, we can't find anywhere a, a basketball stadium yeah so once there is a national plan long run for development of sport plus tax incentives for brands to invest in sports now you'll see things moving okay on that note we we have to call it a wrap for today it's been a very engrossing session Thank you very much, Brian, for honoring this in invitation. There's a lot that you have said today that I'm sure would, would um, um, energize a lot of people in the industry listening to this. And thank you very much, Asha, for being, being here again. Um, it's always a great pleasure, pleasure to have you in the studio with me. Right. So, Brian, you want to say good Thank you very much, Father. It's a pleasure and uh, looking forward to engage, Father. Thank okay. you very much. Yeah, okay then. And Asha? Thanks, thanks for inviting. It was a pleasure. And see you uh, on, uh, on our match days. Okay. Unfortunately, Brian, we didn't speak too much about your Africa, um, your Africa Football Business Summit. Football Business Summit. Yeah, we're going to yeah. talk about, we're going to talk about, and I'm going to ensure that we engage again, maybe on, on radio next, next time around. And so you can elaborate on, on that, all right? And so thank you very much, viewers, for, for watching. Until we meet again next week for another bumper. Next week is going to be hot. And I'd advise you to, to stay tuned for who our guest is going to be. All right? It's a big name in African football. And, you know, um, you don't want to miss that. Until we meet again next week, this is me for saying, be productive, be good, and stay safe. <laughs>